Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a response to this video uploaded by the elder, but not the Zakba, as you can see. His page, GMS Narrator SC7. Subscribe and be edified. The title of the video that I will be responding to Response The Real Israelites Can Everyone Be Saved? All right, then he has the hashtag No. <laughs> Salvation, Grafted, Redeemed, Adoption, which he discussed uh, those particular uh, points in his lesson, which is a good lesson. You should watch it. Um, and be edified and subscribe and as you can see here our people have a lust you know to uh, want to save the heathen nations all right you have some of them who are still stuck in christianity and you have through a lot of the talking points that are happening in the earth a lot of our people you know waking up to the fact that they are israelites but they want to take the uh easy route and um, trim their way to seek love when not one of the nations, all right, especially the small hats, have used any of their uh, aid, any of their uh, riches, any of their blessings to um, establish anything for you Israelites. You see? However, when you Israelites find out that you're Israelites, a lot of you, OK, you 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 uh, find out how, you know, to uh, record, you get a phone and you press that record button. And the first thing you want to talk about is how everybody can be saved, not even understanding what salvation is. Not even understanding the new covenant. And. Ultimately, our people are seeing the persecution that's coming to those of us who understand that we're Israelites. So what they want to do is make this doctrine, this gospel to seem world friendly. All right. To make it acceptable to everyone. And that's not the straight gate. You see. And when you deal with this topic of salvation, you know, ultimately salvation. Is the new covenant in which the Israelites will receive new bodies. OK, and they won't be subject to sin. OK, they're going to be called up into the heavens, as the scriptures say. And death will no longer have any reign over them. As a matter of fact, that's described in the book of First Corinthians, the 15th chapter, which we'll get. So we're going to listen to this individual. All right. Uh, Eve. And as you can see, the real Israelites, can everyone be saved is, uh, I guess, the title of her video. But let's listen to her and uh, we'll get a few points and hopefully edification can come of it because you know the good thing that's happening is everybody's talking see the talking point you know uh that are centered around you know uh kanye west kyrie irving and all of these other uh, various different things that are happening who the true israelites are the the the, the fake ish people all right all of these things and these conversations are being had so that we can edify through the Holy Spirit, go back into the basics and do these videos so that those who are of the elect, who are caught up in this mess, who are, who are searching and looking for the truth, can eventually run across the truth. However, the Most High God, Yahweh, through Yahweh Shai, sees fit for them to wake up and win because there's a lot of things that are getting ready to come down the pipe. All right, there's, there's about to be a lot of people, you know, uh, coming in. You know, um, in the last call for uh, <laughs> salvation as we're singing this new song. So as the scriptures say, we can do nothing against the truth before the truth. So everything happening, all of these talking points, it works in our favor. Now, I don't like going back and forth with women. But. Her talking points and what she's saying is something that we can get into and bring out edification. So that's what I'll do. So uh, let me rewind here and let's get it. You 
being a Hebrew Israelite or not being a Hebrew Israelite does not determine your salvation. And if you notice a lot of our people, and I don't know if she's a Christian, I believe she she knows she's an Israelite. I believe she I believe because I was watching this video, but I was kind of dozing. I have to rewatch it. I was listening, but I was kind of, you know, in and out. But um, a lot of our people who come into the understanding that they're Israelites and a lot of these Christians, they like to downplay the importance of the Israelites in the Bible. Okay, salvation in the Bible was centered around the Israelites. As a matter of fact, this brother here, Royal Priesthood 144, Jeremiah 3 and 23, truly in vain is salvation hope for from the hills, all right, meaning these various different governments that our people have trusted in that have failed them, okay, and from the multitude of the mountains, okay, mountains and governments represents, uh, mountains and hills represents governments, rulers, okay, it says truly and the Lord God is is the salvation of Israel. That's Jeremiah 3 and 23. Now, a Christian will say, well, that's the Old Testament. All right. Or an Israelite Christian, because that's what a lot of you are, Israelite Christians um, who don't know what's going on. All right. Um, you'll you'll, you know, come from the point where, you know, y'all y'all read out of the Old Testament. Well, the whole time. The New Testament was being recorded and written. All they were doing was quoting from the Old Testament as, as it was written. This happened so, because it was fulfilled. That was written by this prophet. Have you not heard what was written by that prophet? Okay. As it is written. The whole time the Messiah was on the, 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 the scene, he quoted from the prophets. He fulfilled what was written in the prophets. Okay. Concerning his coming, his birth, his sacrifice. And he's going to fulfill what's written in the prophets again about delivering and gathering his elect, destroying and taking down these heathen nations and setting up the throne of David on the planet Earth, which the throne of David, the tabernacle of David that is being built as in the days of old. OK. Was always centered around dominion over the heathen rulership over the heathen. You see, so being an Israelite is very, very important. And, 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 and salvation is for the Israelites. As a matter of fact, let's get Romans, the ninth chapter. Okay. Well, well, this is a good one. We'll get that too. But let's get Romans, the ninth chapter. <clears throat> it's Romans 9 and 3. For I wish that myself were accursed from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Meaning he wished that he, you know, could have... Uh, been the sacrifice you know like he would do the same thing you know it says who are israelites my brethren my kinsmen who are israelites see i for, for i wish that myself let's read this in the nlt for my people all right the jews my brothers and sisters i would be willing to forever be cursed cut off from hamashiach if that would save them See, so his kinsmen, according to the flesh, his brothers and sisters, right? The elect who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption. What is the adoption? Being brought back to the father. Okay, being reconciled. Now, it was the Israelites who were, were, were divorced under that first covenant and needed to be reconciled. And that's the purpose of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. He gave us a grace period, you see, so that we didn't have to worry as the nation of Israel, which we believe we're Israelites first off through faith. But all we have to do is go into the prophecies and we're doing what the scripture said, the remnant, which is the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will be doing in the latter days. We're doing exactly what it said they would uh, be doing. You see? So, Everything is centered around the Israelites, the chosen lineage in the Bible, man. 
So why in the hell do our people have a problem? Or why? I just did a video the other day on a guy, <laughs> you know, uh, bringing out the uh, the term ethnos. It's basically like our people uh, uh, have a problem and they're afraid to be special. Because being special comes with a responsibility and it comes with a with a heavy load because who we are and <laughs> you know the the uh the spirit surrounding us is getting ready to bring forth a whole hell of a lot of persecution. As you can see, they're openly buck breaking these two individuals that are coming in the likeness of rebellious slaves. Okay, with uh, uh Ye and, and Kyrie. You know, the, the which, you know, they're apologizing, you know, because they, they, they're they witnessing the hell that comes with even uttering that you're in a, 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 a Jew or an Israelite. So our people, they want to try to get take the easy route out and say, well, yeah, we are Israelite, but everybody can be saved. Well, that, that ain't what the Bible say. You see? For my brethren, my kinsmen, who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption, okay, and the glory, and the covenants, <laughs> and the giving of the law, and the services of God, and the promises. Let's look up this word glory. So the glory pertains to the Israelites, all right? And that's thus said the scripture. Now, this term Gentile and heathen has everybody bugged out, but you would have to under understand the history. Okay, let's look up this word, the glory. To whom pertain the adoption and the glory. The word glory is doxa, opinion, judgment, view. Okay, opinion, estimate, whether good or bad concerning someone. In the New Testament, always a good opinion concerning one resulting in praise, honor, and glory. Splendidness. Brightness, magnificent, majesty, and how 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 what, what is that glory going to be fulfilled in when the law, statutes, and commandments are written in us, and death no longer has any dominion over us? As a matter of fact, let's get First Corinthians the fifteenth chapter. Okay, and this chapter is written to the Israelites. This whole book is written to the Church of Corinth. Okay, a group of Israelites who were scattered who turned from the idols that they were worshiping among the heathen. Okay? Let's go back. We'll go back to that scripture, but let's go here to 1 Corinthians 15 and 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, Matthew 24 and 31, the, 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 the uh, the angel shall sound with a great sound of a trumpet, and Yahweh Shah is going to gather his elect from the four winds of the earth. Right? Let's get that real quick. Matthew 24 and 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. See? The elect from the four winds from one end of heaven unto the other the elect okay Isaiah 45 and 4 for Jacob my servant's sake and Israel mine elect for I have called thee by name I have surnamed thee and thou hast not known me you see which is a part of the glory to be surnamed by the most high meaning <laughs> alright uh, uh, he put his name on you you're his chosen possession and he has a promise for that chosen possession in the form of mercy and us being reconciled back to our heavenly estate through Yahweh Shai. Okay? So in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this incorruptible must put on incorruption. This is salvation. And the mortal must put on immortality. This is not promised unto all nations. The scriptures tell you the house of David shall be as God or the Allahayim. 
That's Israelites. Especially if it's saying that the, the tabernacle of David has to be built as, as in the days of old. What did David do? He beat down the heathen. That's how Solomon was able to have 40 years of peace. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Where is that saying? Huh? Isaiah 25 and 8. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. You see? But thanks be to the Most High, which giveth us victory through our Lord, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. You see? So th this is the fulfillment of the new covenant when we're changed and we're given bodies that are not subject to sin. That's salvation and that is for the Israelites. And it, the, the, again, what he's quoting is the book of Isaiah, which is speaking to the Israelites about the Israelites. Okay. Song of praise for God's favor. This is a song of praise that Isaiah is singing. All right. For God's favor towards his people. You see, he's going to destroy everything and he's going to what? Bring salvation unto his people. He's going to swallow up death and victory, Isaiah 25 and 8, and wipe away the tears from all faces and the rebuke of his people shall he take from off all the earth. For the Lord have spoken it and it shall and it shall be said in that day, this is our God. Lo, we have waited for him, the Lord God of who? Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We shall be glad and rejoice in his salvation. I mean, anyway, so the, the glory comes with, you know, the fulfillment of the new covenant. That's a part of the glory amongst many other things, man. All right. <laughs> Let's see here. Woo. The glorious condition of blessedness into which is appointed and promised that the true Followers of Yahweh Shai, it says Christians, the, the uh, followers of Yahweh Shai who were Israelites were called Christians in Antioch, but really they were followers of the Mashiach, the Messiah. See? Shall enter after their Savior's return from heaven. And that, that promise, that blessedness is the fulfilling of the new covenant. To where the law, statutes, and commandments will be written in us. We will have heavenly bodies and be able to rule on earth eventually. So let's go back to Eve and let's listen again and get some more points. As a matter of fact, we'll go back to that. But uh, Romans 9 and, and 4, who are Israelites who pertain to the adoption and the glory and the covenants Okay, in the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, the Messiah came. Who is over all God blessed forever, Amon. Okay, so the, 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 that's why Yahweh Shai came to redeem his people back to the father. Okay. And we'll get that in just a minute, but let's listen again. Being a Hebrew Israelite or not being a Hebrew Israelite does not determine your salvation. What determines your salvation? If you accept the Messiah in spirit and in truth, believe he died for your sins, rose again on the third. Okay. Believe he died for your sins. Now let's get the book of uh, Luke. All right. Um, man, this is a, this whole chapter is good. This is uh, Luke 1 and 53. He have filled the hungry with good things and the rich he have sent empty away. And if you ask these people, well, who was John the Baptist baptizing? You know what they're going to say? They're going to say he was baptizing everybody. It wasn't based on you being an Israelite. Really? Well, earlier in this chapter, it tells you what he was going to do. In verse 15. All right. He shall drink neither strong nor wine or strong drink. He shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. 
and he had a father and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. That was his uh, purpose. See, his baptism was was to Israelites amongst the circumcision. That's why he was he went to the Jordan River. You see. And Israelites were being baptized. He turned many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. All right, so let's go back here because this is a heavy chapter. Luke 1 and 53, he hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent uh, empty away. He hath hoping his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spake to our fathers Abraham and to his seed forever. Now, how is the seed accounted? The scripture saying, Isaac shall thy seed be called who had Jacob and Esau, and the blessing fell upon the head of Jacob, who had 12 sons. Let's read this in the NLT. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful, just like in Egypt. Okay, why did he uh, 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 start to take down Pharaoh? Because he heard the cry of the Israelites and he remembered his covenant that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the very thing that's happening here. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's get that. Now, the Messiah celebrated the Passover, right? <laughs> so the Israelites matter. What the hell are you talking about? Let's go to the book. I believe it's Exodus, the second chapter. Yeah, Exodus, the second chapter. In the, the 23rd verse, and it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of bondage, and they cried, and their cry came up unto God by reason of bondage. And the Most High heard their groaning, and the Most High remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and had respect unto them. So he remembered that covenant. So what did he do? He, he, he brought them out of Egypt. All right. By the hand of a strong angel that he set up. You see, he remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, which all you have to do is go into the history of the Bible, which we bring these things out. OK, Psalms 105 and 6. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Israel. All right. Or Jacob, which is Israel, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He have remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, and he confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying unto thee, will I give the land of Canaan, all right, the lot of your inheritance. And this is why the remnant are awakening to be returned to that land which it was the it was called the land of Canaan but that's the garden of Eden that's Jerusalem but because of uh prophecy's sake heathen inhabited that land at times okay and why you think David had to win those wars because those heathen had control over the land you see so go back to Luke See, this is Zechariah's first words. John the Baptist's father, all right? Uh, once, 1 and 68, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, okay? And then you have this thing where they're saying, he died for my sins, except that he died for your sins. Well, let's get the book of Acts 5 and 31, okay? 30. The God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, rose up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Let's see if we can find something else. Acts 13 and 23. Of this man's seed have God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior, Yahweh Shai. He died for our sins because under that first covenant that we broke, okay, our, our sins are what separated us from our power. You see, as a matter of fact, that's in the scriptures. 
Okay. Your sins have separated you. You see? My bad. This is the book. Yep. Sin is iniquity. Isaiah 59 and 2. But your iniquity have separated between you and your power and your sins have hid his face from you and he will not hear you see but through Yahweh Shai we have a way back the nation of Israel have a way back you see so he died for our sins you see Matthew 1 and 21 and she shall bring forth the son and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai for he shall save his people from their sins again let's get Galatians the fourth chapter sonship and the messiah okay galatians 4 and 4 but when the fullness of time was come god sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law <laughs> to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons now who was under the law who needed to be redeemed back from the father Okay. Who was under the law? All right, the Israelites. And Yahweh Shai's blood, all right, his death and resurrection freed us <laughs> from being bound to that first covenant and gave us grace so that we can be adopted back to the Father through his blood, through bl belief and faith in him. Okay, the law still stand, but our righteousness is not a right justified by perfection in the law. So he redeemed us from the curse of the law, as it says in other scriptures, man. See. Luke 2 and 11, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, which is Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Okay. So people read terms like all and man and this and they don't understand that this is speaking of israelites the whole time here it is this is the book of hebrews now are all of the nations on the planet earth hebrews no okay hebrews 11 and 1 this is written to the hebrew israelites as paul said i'm a hebrew and i'm an israelite you see which Paul was of the circumcision, but he came to the conclusion through being knocked off his horse that righteousness in the law ain't going to get us back to the father. All right. This is uh, Hebrews one and one. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake unto us in the past. All right. Let's read this again. God, who at sundry times, let's read this in the NLT. God, all right, long ago, the Most High spake many times in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. Now, who, who, what ancestors were the prophets talking to? The Israelites, our fathers. This ain't to everybody. Okay? Because on one hand, some people will acknowledge, well, yeah, the prophets... Yeah, it was all about Israel back then, but Jesus changed it. No. Okay. It's just that now, okay, Yahweh Shai is our way back to the Holy of Holies, our way to the Father, not through a high priest, a physical temple, and perfection in the law. A high priest after the order of Aaron. See, our high, we have a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, Yahweh Shai. It says, hath in these last days spoken unto us, okay, by his son, through the Holy Spirit, whom he have appointed heir of all things, uh, and by whom also he made the worlds, being, who being the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of his person, 
and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins. See, he purged our sins <laughs> and sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Our sins, the sins of the Israelites. You see, because the Israelites were the only ones that were under that covenant. Which uh, clearly that can be explained in the book of Hebrews, the eighth chapter. Let's get the book of Peter. Now, who's the book of Peter written to? Is it written to the whole world? Even John Calvin knows and understands that this is speaking to, uh, right, uh, uh, you know, the uh, Jews scattered. Okay, Israelites who were scattered. First Peter is one and one. Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Shah, to the strangers scattered throughout Pont uh, Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctification of the Spirit. See? His, his good will through the sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh Shah, grace unto you and peace be multiplied you see elect according to the foreknowledge of the most high we were chosen from the foundation of the earth all right but clearly these strangers that are scattered okay are of the diaspora because according to a curse you would have jews all right israelites period scattered throughout the four corners of the earth diaspora all right a scattering dispersion of the israelites dispersed among the nations among the heathen of the followers of yahweh shai scattered among the gentiles turning from those idols and coming back to the heavenly father just as we are doing so this whole book is written uh uh, uh to the israelites for that inheritance as you see here, incorruptible and undefiled, that's not going to fade away. And they want it to fade away. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto the salvation ready to be revealed in this time. Now, what? who's going to be saved? According to prophecy, the scripture can't be broken. Isaiah 45 and 17. But Israel shall be saved in Yahweh with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. That's the world that's going to be saved. Because you have many worlds. All right? Isaiah 45 and 24. Surely shall one say, In Yahweh have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come. And all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. In Yahweh shall all the seed of Israel be justified. All right. And show glory. So being an Israelite is very, very uh, 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 important to salvation. They go hand in hand. So what in the hell is she talking about? See, it's so much that these women could be getting on video talking about, but they just want to get on video and try to usurp authority over the men. All for their master who is going to he's leaving you out to, for dry already. Okay. First Peter is chapter two and twenty four. Who 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 his own self bear our sins? Who sinned? Who broke the first covenant? Answer that question. It was the Israelites. So he bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Now, what is he what is he quoting? He's quoting the book of Isaiah. Which the, the clearly the whole book of Isaiah is dealing with Israel's salvation. Isaiah 14, <laughs> Isaiah 60, Isaiah 61. All of Isaiah is dealing with, with, the, with the Israelites being brought back to the heavenly father. We just read Isaiah 45. Israel's going to be saved. But here it is. Peter is quoting Isaiah. Okay. By whose stripes ye were healed. Who was healed? Who did Yahweh Shai go on the cross for? Who did he re who whose sins did he redeem? Who did he re redeem back to the Father? Who did he reconcile? <laughs> who 
who needed reconciliation? Huh? The Israelites. Okay. <laughs> the ministry of reconciliation. Hebrews 12 and 17. Wherefore, in all things it behooved them to be made like unto his brethren, born in, uh, uh, through a man and a woman, flesh and blood, that he might be merciful and faithful high priests in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. What, what people? The Hebrews. See? Which Abram was called a Hebrew, and it was promised unto him that his seed would be heirs to the promise given unto him through Isaac and Jacob and their seed. That's the promise. That's the, the promised land. It can't be that covenant and it cannot be altered. Abram belonged to a specific family through Adam, through Seth, because Abel was slew, through Noah, through Shem, which everybody's talking about anti sin was Shem or Faxad. Eber, Peleg, so forth, all the way up to Abram, who was restored to his 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 uh, heritage, man, and left out of a circumcised state, and turned and followed the Most High God, man, and he met with his priest and tied to his priest. So reconciliation for the sins of the people is the Israelites. As a matter of fact. This is a good one, too. Let's read this. First, second Corinthians five and 18. All things are, are and all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself by Yahweh Shai. Now, if the heathen were never with the most high in the beginning, they were never his people in the, what you call the Old Testament. Or, or really, it's under the first covenant, the old covenant. See? It was only the Israelites that were with him and married unto him under that covenant. So it was the Israelites who needed to be reconciled. That was the purpose of Yahweh Shai. See, to free us from the bondage of that first covenant. So that we can freely serve the most high God through faith in him and that sacrifice, man. And have given us the ministry of reconciliation. Let's read this word reconciliation. Who need to be reconciled again, brought back, <laughs> you know, again to, 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 uh, let's see, exchange. As a matter of fact, let's just get to the point. In the New Testament, the restoration of the favor of God to sinners that repent and put their trust in the expediatory death of a Mashiach restoration okay and he's going to restore us he's going to restore us back to the father that's what Yahweh Shai is set to do Isaiah 49 and 6 and we, we keep reading in Isaiah right and he said and Yahweh Shai quoted Isaiah himself and he said it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of jacob and to restore the preserve the elect the remnant of israel i will also give thee for a light unto the gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the ends of the world okay and the light unto the gentiles is speaking of the israelites who would eventually fall off fall away that's why they would need to be restored. That's why the scriptures say ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols. The scriptures talk about the Israelites scattered among the Gentiles. See? Jeremiah 30 and 17. For I will restore health unto thee and I will heal thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion who no man seeketh after. And that's the, what the world wants. The world wants us to just be a no people forever. And the Lord just cast us off and we have no, you know, uh, say so. We just threw. Nah, man. 
What, what did the disciples ask Yahweh Shai when they thought, all right, that he was getting ready to, uh, that they were getting ready to get the kingdom back then? Acts 1 and 6. And when they therefore come to were therefore come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? They wanted to be the kingdom to be restored unto Israel. Now, when is the last time the Israelites had a kingdom? Under Solomon. You see? Which he forwarded the throne of David. What, what, what was the state of the heathen under Solomon's kingdom? That's second Kings or first Kings, the ninth chapter. First Kings nine and twenty one. Yep. Boom. And all the people that were left of the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, which were not of the children of Israel, the, the heathen who were, were, were left after David beat them down, the remnant of that heathen. Their children that were left after them in a land whom the children of Israel were not able to utterly destroy upon those did Solomon levy a tribute of bond service unto this day. See bond service, a tribute of bond service. Let's read that in the NLT. OK, these were descendants of the nations whom the people of Israel who had not completely destroyed because the tabernacle of David took them down david and his mighty men so solomon conscripted them for his labor force and they serve in labor force till this day and what the kingdom of heaven is going to be solomon's kingdom times uh, uh, infinity on a whole nother level where all israel is perfect but of the children of Israel, did Solomon make no bond of men, but they were men of war. And his, so he put his people on, but he put the, the heathen to work. You see. So. Again, what in the hell are these people talking about? Let's go back here again. No, I went a little bit. Oh, uh, a reconciliation. Second Corinthians five and nineteen to wit that God was in Hamashiach reconciling the world, the cosmos. See, people see world, so the whole world's gonna be reconciled. Shut up. Unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. See? Not imputing their trespasses. That's why the scriptures say, Blessed is he whose transgressions are uh covered. And who the Lord does not impute sin. Which is the mercies of David. <laughs> oh my goodness man. Psalms 32. And this nigga on there with these shiny ass lips want to save everybody. This is uh, Psalms 32 and 1. Blessed is he whose transgression is covered or forgiven and whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man whom the Lord Yahweh imputed not iniquity and in whose spirit there is no guile. And clearly that's that's the elect. Starting with the 144,000 in their mouth was found no guile who are Israelites and a large multitude who are ultimately going to be uh, given mercy under them. So the trespasses come th who who trespassed who broke the law. We got to keep asking these things. Now, the scriptures say here again. By whose stripes ye were healed. OK, second, first Peter's two and twenty four of his own will bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should give unto uh should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed so let's get isaiah 53 okay and one who have believed our report and to whom is the arm of the lord revealed yahweh shine revealed to everybody for he shall grow up before him a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground see and ultimately that's uh speaking of yahweh shy who was going to come out of judah all right 
out of Bethlehem was where he was going to be born, which pretty much it looks like just a small land, but there's power to it. It's a very, very rich tradition and history of that land. David was born there. Solomon was born there. That's the land that uh, ultimately um, Boaz redeemed <laughs> as the kinsman redeemer, which was a sign of what Yahweh was going to do for his kinsmen and redeeming us so that we can get the land. Very, very important, man, to know the, 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 the history of the scripture so you can respect Yahweh Shai's sacrifice. These people are just talking. These people are just Christians. No matter if they know they're Israelites or not, they're still in that Christianity mindset. And the true Christians are the Israelites that follow Yahweh Shai hardcore and were mocked about it in Rome and eventually kicked out. You niggas don't want to be kicked. You're scared for Rome to come after you. And we're in Rome again. And the followers of Yahweh Shai are in Rome again, stirring things up in the spirit, man. This is why they're trying to uh, uh, forge an accusation. So he hath no form nor comeliness, all right? When we, when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. And all this is saying, this ain't saying that the Messiah was an ugly, all right, uh, man, but he came lowly. He came regular. It was nothing. It, was, it wasn't a show. He came, you know, to do a duty. He didn't come in a, in a majestic state. Or to be noticed. Alright. It says. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised. And, and we esteemed him not. The nation of Israel. Alright. Um, gave him hell man. Surely he hath borne our griefs. And carried our sorrows. We yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of god and afflicted we we saw him catching hell see but he he carried our sorrows but he was wounded for our transgressions see he was wounded for our transgressions <laughs> look up the word he was wounded for our transgressions Meaning you went against the order. Okay. Numbers 14 and 41. And Moses said, wherefore now do ye transgress the commandment of Yahweh, but it shall not prosper. Transgress. And the scriptures tell you that sin is the transgression of the law. Yeah, I should have typed in transgression. So lucky. <laughs> Exodus 34 and 7. Keeping the mercy for thousands, forgiving the iniquity and transgressions of sins. And that will and, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. See, so we needed Yahweh Shai. <laughs> we needed him because we would have constantly been cursed and cut off, man. I mean, there's so many scriptures. What I really should do is just look up the word transgression. I'm tripping. But he was wounded for our transgressions. See? The word transgressions. is Peshai to, to rebel rebellion <laughs> guilt of transgression right? punishment of transgression in general transgression rebellion to rebel to revolt <laughs> Jeremiah 5 and 23, but this people have a revolting and rebellious heart. They are revolted and, and, go, and go mad. Anyway, 
the chest, the, uh, Isaiah 55 and 53 and 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes are we healed. Who? The Israelites. All we like a sheep are going astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid him on him the iniquity of us all. So he died for our sins. <sighs> Isaiah 53 and 10. Yet it pleased Yahweh to bruise him. Through his stripes we are healed and have put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. See that? His soul was made an offering for sin. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. Let's go back. To Keisha. He's sitting there with a hoodie all boldened. Like, just shut up. And you follow his commandments. Wait a minute. So you got to follow his commandments? Well, aren't you women commanded not to teach and, and usurp authority over a man? Th th those precepts are commandments. If you follow his commandments, that determines your salvation. It has not. No, 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 no. The scriptures don't say, you see, that's what Yahweh Shai freed us from. See, perfection by the law saves nobody. Okay? The commandments are fulfilled in faith in Yahweh Shai. The just shall live by faith. That's true love. Now, as you're walking, okay, and, and, and um, fulfilling what is known as love, you, you, you're keeping the law. But you're not justified by the technicalities of the commandments and the law. Anyway, nothing to do with you being an Israelite or not being an Israelite. The commandments were given to the Israelites. I mean, why why do our people have such a disdain for being an Israelite? I mean, it's the name of Israel. Just type in Israel. And this is not even including the Apocrypha, but you got two thousand two hundred and ninety four verses. Type in Israel saved. The remnant of Israel shall be saved. <laughs> Wait a minute. My, my heart's desire is for Israel that they shall be saved. All Israel shall be saved. Wait a minute. And it's the elect because not all Israel is of Israel. Jeremiah 23 and 6, in his days, Yahweh shall a branch, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell in safety. But Israel shall be saved. All right, Isaiah 30 and 15, for thus said the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest, ye shall be saved. What? what, what? <laughs> Yeah, salvation is for Israel, man. Okay. I mean, it's the same thing. Salvation of Israel. I mean, all these scriptures, you can read them. But when you type in Israel, period, let's go to uh, the kingdom that we're crying for, you know, like Revelation 21. We're going to end it off in a little bit. Revelation 21. I mean, the names of Israel, <laughs> the names of the 12 tribes of Israel are going to be written on the gates. And this is the tabernacle of God. This is salvation. This is when we have no more tears, no more death, no more sorrow. Israel is at the forefront of that. No heathen can have any part in this.
Oh man. <sighs> Why do I even bring this up? I see a lot of people, people who are discovering that they are Hebrew Israelites. I see a lot of us saying that, oh, we're Hebrew Israelites, and if you're not one, then you can't be saved. That is not true. If you're not of the elect, because you got a lot of Israelites that's going to be destroyed. So you have to clarify that. We're, we're saying the elect of Israel are going to be saved. So, yeah, it does have to be, do with you being an Israelite. Because that's the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, who was promised that land. Why is that? Because that is not scripture. Point blank, period. We just showed you the scriptures. Shut up. It's like you just want to shut up. Jeez. And I ain't about to sit here and act like I don't understand where that energy comes from. I promise y'all I get it. I really do. I see where the energy is coming from because when you look at the history and what's been done to us as a people, it's in order to stay sane, you don't think about it. So I I get it. I understand. But that is not. And, and well, the scriptures say what? Second Thessalonians, the first chapter, it says. Second Thessalonians one and six, seeing that is a righteous thing with the most high to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. <laughs> and to you who are troubled rest with us. So, yeah, vengeance is coming and we have comfort in the word. See, the scriptures say we're going to be saved from our enemies, as a matter of fact. Let's hold that, hold that, true, <laughs> hold that. Let's get Luke 1. Boy, you niggas, man. But it's all good. You know, we ain't mad at you, sweetie. But you out of order and off, and the Heavenly Father's going to destroy you if you don't repent and shut your damn mouth. Luke 1 and 68, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he have visited and redeemed his people and have raised up a horn of salvation for us out of the uh, house of his servant David, which he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, that we should be saved from our enemies. See? Psalms 106 and 10, and he saved them from the hand of him that hated them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. Save us, verse 47, save us, O Lord, our God, and gather us from among the heathen and give thanks to thy holy name and to triumph in thy praise. Isaiah 40, 14 and 1, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers, okay, the large multitude, all right, who, who have inheritance rights and are able to return through the 144, starting with Yahweh Shai at the head of that and the 12 at the head of that, okay, they, 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 they have the right to return. They're going to be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob, all right, which is ultimately the tabernacle of David. And they're going to get mercy, the mercies of David. It says, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives who captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. I mean, we can keep going. It's a lot of Isaiah up in here. <laughs> I mean, we can go to uh, you know, uh, Jer uh, Ezekiel. And the Messiah himself told you the scripture can't be broken. So all of these prophecies, which are future prophecies, are going to be uh, uh, fulfilled. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, neither shall the beast of the land devour them, for they shall dwell safe, and none shall make them afraid. Man. <sighs> so many. So we're going to be saved from our enemies, man. 
so we can serve him without fear. All right. The same thing that happened in, in Egypt. And this is the new Egypt. So the Lord says it is a righteous thing to recompense tribulation to them who trouble us. I mean, you got Isaiah 149, I mean, uh, Psalm, Psalms 149. Okay, it's so, it's so many scriptures, man. Revelation 2 and 26. <sighs> Listen to a little bit more and close it up. Revelation 2 and 26. It's going to be 1 o'clock. And to him that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken into shivers, even as I have received of my father. So we're going to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai and ruling over the heathen. Okay? Bible. That is not scripture. We cannot put. Notice this nigga ain't brought out not one scripture. How many scriptures have we brought out here today? Our own thoughts above the most high and what he said in his word. No, you're fulfilling that. Let's get the book of Romans. <laughs> 10 and 1. Brethren. Okay. My heart's desire and prayer for God to Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of the most high God. Okay, and then we even get precepts, man. See? So, 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 you all are through. And don't, you bet not bring up the Gentiles, because... Y'all don't understand history. You don't understand what happened in the Greek Empire because you don't acknowledge the Apocrypha, most of you. You don't understand why the Israelites were being called heathen and uncircumcision. So you don't have you have a zeal, but it's not according to knowledge. And this is the end result. When you read the Bible in its entirety, Paul, perfect example, Paul was an Israelite. In Paul's ministry, like 95% of his ministry, if not 98% of his ministry, consisted of preaching to who? The Gentiles. There we go. <laughs> and what did Paul what did Paul just say right here? His heart's desire is for Israel to be saved. And you had a lot of Israelites that weren't of the circumcision that were called Gentiles, heathen. Okay, why? Because of their works. But the scriptures say, ye were Gentiles, ye who were called uncircumcision by the circumcision are now granted access back through Yahweh Shai, man. I mean, we ain't even got to get those scriptures. We always bring those out. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 12 and 2, ye were Gentiles. Let's get that. Got to get that. First Corinthians 12 and 2, ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. And LT, you know that when ye were still pagans, you were led astray and swept along, worshiping speechless idols. So the Israelites had fell and broken the covenant and were cut off but now they have access back through Yahweh Shai the Gentiles are Israelites scattered among the heathen okay I mean we just did a lesson on this here we go again so everything the Lord wrote you know, we just uh, uh, Paul himself and he was set up to go and teach those uncircumcised those Israelites who were scattered but he himself said what acts yeah james to the 12 tribes scattered abroad greeting what let's read this in the nlt for you suckers acts 26 and 6 
And now I am on trial because I, of, of my hope in the fulfillment of God's promise made to our ancestors. In fact, that is why the 12 tribes of Israel zealously worship the Most High day and night for that promise. And they share the same hope that I have, <laughs> that the 12 tribes are restored back to the Heavenly Father, man. It's just that at this time in the New Testament, a lot of them were called heathen, Gentiles. Because of the idols they fell to in the Greco-Roman Empire, which is a whole history. We got lessons on it. The Gentiles were not bloodline Israel, and Paul was preaching to the Gentiles. But then Yahweh Shai just said he's going to give you power to destroy those nations, which are not Israelites. Again, this is why it is very important that you people shut the hell up. We've been through these same arguments. Many Gentiles will be saved, will be grafted in because. And we have a, a, a oh boy. And we have a um, lesson on the grafting in. This is the olive tree and Israel is known as the olive tree. But we're not going to go through all of that. Check this video out. Christians visit GMS edification on Romans 11. If you uh, can't get to it, ask on the comment board and we'll leave it. But I'll go all into that. It's a good video um, from what brothers and sisters say. You know, I'm not. And you'll get that understanding. If you need it, you know, ask because the time is short. Because of their faith. Now, just because Gentiles, people who are not bloodline Israel, are able to be grafted in, doesn't mean that, you know, we're just distant, dismissed, and thrown to the side. God is not done with us yet. He's still See, yeah, he, she understands she's an Israelite, but she wants to save everybody. Oh, boy. God has a covenant to fulfill with us, but we cannot go around saying that <laughs> if you are... Well, she understands that there's a covenant to be fulfilled are the heathen a part of that covenant because that is salvation <laughs> the the new covenant is salvation so the heathen can have the covenant too no and that's that we can go into scriptures and show you that we're not an israelite you can't be saved look this is no. enough for you that's nigga. that's just not biblical all right I won't. all right man so I mean, we'll end it off with Hebrews 8. We just showed you who the covenants were for, for and this Negro ain't bring out no scriptures. Look like one of them referees at the YMCA. This is the book of Hebrews 8, you know, refereeing your, your son's game. Hebrews 8 and 7. <laughs> 6, but now he have obtained a more excellent ministry by how much he is also the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should not place have been sought for the second, for finding fault with them who... Behold, he said, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Yasha Allah, Israel, and the house of Judah. All right. The northern and southern kingdom, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant and I regarded them not. They became Gentiles. For this is the covenant that I will make with them. All right, said the Lord. But see, not all of our people became Gentiles because you had the circumcision who stuck to the traditions. The Messiah, John the Baptist are examples of men, Paul, who were born of the circumcision. See? And a lot of those wicked scribes and Pharisees didn't, they were like, hell no, nah, you got to be perfect in the law. You got to be circumcised. You got to do this, that. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them into their hearts, and I will be unto them a God, and they shall be unto me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor, 
and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from least to greatest. So we're not going to have to teach each other. However, ended off here, Micah 4. We are going to teach you heathen. You All of you heathen are going to learn righteousness. And that's a blessing. But you don't have the blessing of the covenants or the being the chosen people of the Heavenly Father. You don't have the blessing of salvation. You're not going to be caught up. No heathen is going to be caught up into the chariot. You, you, you celebrate and getting crowned by Yahweh shine. You look to the right and Moab, Ham, it's a slot for them. They they in the they 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 high up in the uh, they get the uh, nosebleed section. No, they're not even gonna even be there. But in the last days, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. <laughs> Scriptures say, all of the kingdom shall obey him. Daniel the seventh chapter, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it, and many nations shall come and say, let us go to the mountain of the house of the Lord. Into the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. Well, no Israel will have to be taught. So who's going to be taught? The heathen. And we will walk in his path, for the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So you are going to have to be taught because you're not a part of that uh, second covenant, nor were you a part of the first. So with that, hopefully I'll edify Shalom. <laughs>